All right. So I'm going to show you my audience first. Make sure I get everyone in the picture. <laughs> Everybody wave. Hello, audience. I do not have um, audience members because this is a college campus on a Friday. So there are no classes in the session. Uh oh, I made it blurry. How did I make it blurry? How do I fix that? Do you know? I'm not sure if it will focus by itself or not. Okay. Alright. So today. I will be teaching you about transition words and phrases. Hopefully no one will call me. Okay, so here is just an interesting statistic. Okay, four out of five students are not proficient writers. This has been measured three times by the National Center for Education and Statistics since 1998. The final time was in 2008. And they, they administer this test by using a writing assessment, and they rank them based on how they write in that assessment. Um, they concluded that about one student in five produces completely unsatisfactory prose, while about 50% meet basic requirements, and only five can be called proficient writers. And because of this, they discovered that most college students who are entering freshmen will have to take a remedial English when they enter college their freshman year. So this is another reason why it's important to know transition words. By knowing this, you will be, make a step to becoming a more proficient writer. So why do we need to know transition words and why are they important? Well, for number one, they help you bridge your gaps in your writing and they make your paper flow smoothly, and they also provide consistency. Also, they um, signal the reader to listen, or the listener, um, about what is coming next in your paper. So what are transition words? Um, transition words um, directly tell the reader the logical relationship between the idea and another idea. So you have your idea here, your transition, and then your, your concluding idea. And I also have a handout filled with transition words and the different types of transition words that are attached to the assignment. Okay, so here's an example. Okay, Tony loves to go swimming in the ocean. However, his parents won't allow him to do that. So you see here our, tra our transition is however. And this tells the reader the logical relationship between the two ideas. Between Tony loves, loves to swim, but his parents won't let him do it. Transitions are words that help us make your writing more that help you make your writing more coherent. Um, they create connections between one clause and another clause, one sentence and another sentence, one group of sentences and the next group of sentences. So, this is just a few examples of how we can use them. Also, you can use them to join two independent clauses. Um, you can use it with a semicolon, a transition, and a comma. So here we have our, another, our other example. We have Tony is a great swimmer, semicolon, furthermore, comma, he is very good at scuba diving. So you can see how we've used that to join the two independent clauses because they can both stand by themselves. Okay, you can also use it to connect two sentences and to show the logical relationship between those two sentences. Whatever our little box pops up. Okay, so we have over here, Tony is very athletic, in period, in fact, comma, he plays three sports at school. So you can see we have connected both sentences that make them flow, it makes it flow easier. So by using in fact, that's a transition phrase. Okay, so your placement, there we go. Um, so rather than placing your transition ones at the beginning of your second sentence, you might also place them in the middle of the second sentence after the subject with two commas. So we've got Tony is very athletic here. So we've got the subject he, he, comma, in fact, comma, plays three sports at school. So here's your first example of the sentence, and then here is how you play out in your transition into the second sentence. Okay, so here's another example. My friend Tony, comma, my friend, comma, Tony, loves to play sports and is very athletic. He has won a scholarship to play football at a university next year. 
So this doesn't sound, doesn't flow very smoothly, so we're going to fix it with a transition word. So it's a correct sentence, but it, it's not really that great. So my friend, comma, Tony, loves to play sports and is very athletic, period. In fact, there's our transition word, comma, he has won a scholarship to play football at a university next year. So that would be how you could make this sentence, or these two sentences flow more smoothly and sound better to your reader. So. Okay, and you also have transitions in longer writing, and this is like when you're writing a five paragraph essay or a longer paper. Um, you can use the transition to show the reader the relationship between one group of sentences and another group of sentences, or one paragraph and another paragraph. Um, this is also important if you want your reader to know <clears throat> that you're changing from one idea to another. So, oh. so as we see here, this is a basic essay outline. Here's your introduction. Here's your body paragraph one. And you're going to use your transition, transition to connect the ideas in body paragraph two to the ideas in body paragraph one. So you're going to finish out your first body paragraph, and then you're going to say at the beginning of your second, in addition, comma. And then it's going to build on this idea from paragraph one. So you can see that the transition connects the idea from paragraph two to paragraph three. So it, once you finish out your second body paragraph, you're going to say furthermore, comma, and then lead into your conclusion. Okay. And then here are my works cited. I use the National Center for Educational Statistics, the Purdue L, and the transition words from MSU. And they're listed on my assignment as well, but I'll turn it in. 